I've had this book for a really long time. It's a reprint of the Modern Bartender's Guide from 1884, written by O.H. Byron, who is largely suspected to be some kind of a pseudonym, not a real person. And for a really long time, I have thought about doing an episode just making the drinks from it, because there is some fucking weird shit in here. Weird shit. And so today, I thought I would take some of the weirder things in here and make them. And a little something I like to call the worst drinks of 1884. Well, we're gonna start right away with page 11. Something called Black Stripe. You might be thinking of um, Black Strap Rum or uh, Red Stripe Beer. Uh, it has nothing really much to do with either of those. I guess it has something to do with Black Strap Rum, which is, I think, rum technically that has had molasses added to it, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Black Strap is a small bar glass. We need one wine glass of St. Croix Rum or Jamaica, a tablespoon of New Orleans molasses, and if called for in the summer, stir with about a tablespoon of water and cool it with fine ice. If in the winter, Fill the glass with boiling water and grate a little nutmeg on top and serve. Shit, I feel like I gotta do that. When I planned this out, I wasn't planning on doing the hot and the cold version, but now that I'm reading this, the hot version sounded actually interesting, so we're gonna do it both ways. We're gonna make the summer and the winter black stripe. Here we go. This is gonna be my summer black stripe, and this will be my winter black stripe. It says that I want a wine glass of Jamaica rum. I, you know, wine glass, it's a tricky one. Um, there are some who would say it means four ounces. I'm gonna tell you that that is too much rum for me. <laughs> now I want some molasses, about a tablespoon. My grandmother used to say, you're moving slower than molasses in January. If called for in summer, do a tablespoon of cold water with fine ice. And yeah, we'll do some cracked ice. If in winter, fill the glass with boiling water, grate a little nutmeg, and serve. That actually sounds nice. Throw a little bit of water into this one. And we'll crack this ice cube. And we'll stir. Try to get that molasses all mixed in. And we'll put a little boiling water into this guy and stir the same. That's an aroma! <laughs> Holy shit! It smells like dock work. <laughs> Gotta pitch the old boards so the boat's nice and watertight there, mateys. Okay, we get some nutmeg on that. This will be the more intense flavor. Let's start with the cold. Whoa, baby! Oh, wow, if only they had had better options. This must have been a sad time. Holy shit. Ooh, that comes back on you. That is not my favorite drink. It is aggressively irony. Um, oh, it is a significant source of iron, so there you go. Uh, yeah, that tastes like metal and anger, it is a very intense flavor. It's not bright, it's not like, ah, up here, it's like, it's death metal. This is death metal. Oh God, that is doing absolutely nothing, nothing for that rum. It tastes like a glass of hatred. It tastes like a toxic waste spill. Four out of five stars. Uh, let's try it hot. The heat and the nutmeg have done a lot to mask the flavor, actually, of the molasses. It tastes way less intense. It also has kind of mellowed out the rum dramatically. Mm. Oh, that's like a first note. It's like the smell of like um, house paint. <laughs> Volatile organic compounds. It does round out into like a not entirely unpleasant molasses flavor. I was about to say, you know, like unsweet brown sugar. That's what molasses is. Not much else. Like it does kind of hide the rum and it's somehow kind of toned down. I really think it's the nutmeg because I'm not getting a loud nutmeg expression. It's there. You get it on your nose big time. You really smell it, but it is somehow tempering these other flavors. There is nothing refreshing about this. It's only refreshing insofar as that it makes you think about how much worse your life could be. Please, no more of that. I guess this is a fine time to bring up the fact that all the glasses I use on the show are provided by Visky Glassware. They are the official glassware provider of how to drink. If you like these glasses and you want to put better drinks in them, uh, check them out. You can use the link in the pin comp below or up here in the corner. Uh, they make beautiful glassware. Thank you to Visky. 
Uh, sorry I defiled you, and will continue to throughout the rest of this episode. I think this is where we're going today. <laughs> I think this is how it's going to go. So this is on page 12. Brandy burned and peach. It says I need a small bar glass. I need a wine glass of brandy, half a tablespoon of sugar. Burn brandy and sugar together in a dish or saucer. Two or three slices of dried peach. Oh, okay. So you burn the brandy and the sugar together in saucer A. Hmm. Okay. And then you put dried peaches into your serving glass and you pour the burned brandy and sugar onto the peaches and then some nutmeg and then that's it. The above is a southern preparation and often used in cases of diarrhea. We want the sugar much closer to the surface where the fire's at so that it sh it'll caramelize and burn. I think that's the idea here. About a tablespoon of sugar, maybe it's more, maybe it's less, you know, whatever. It's not like they were measuring all that careful in 1884. This company sent me this many years ago. This is American Brandy by Copper and Kings, a song for you. It was like a special release that they did. So what I might actually do is burn some brandy and sugar and then add it to some brandy that wasn't burned. That's one ounce. Now I'm gonna prepare my second glass. This one will be good. Some lovely grocery store dried peaches. Three went in there, and this one's for me. Mm. Let's set this on fire. There we go, that did it. I might try and add a little more sugar to that, just to try and really get some burning sugar in there. Now we're burning some sugar. So that was one ounce of brandy. Let's add our other ounce and a half over to here. Get that all in there, burn your fingers. And now I gotta grate some nutmeg on it, as you do in 1884. It's a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. It's a nicely sweet, caramelized kind of brandy. I totally get why they would think this was a cure for diarrhea now, because in a lot of ways, this is really close to something like rock and rye, which they thought was like a cure for anything else. It's not hot at all, I kind of wish it was, but I modified how I made it, so that's probably a factor. I wonder how the peaches are now, kind of covered in that brandy and sugar. Not really improved. I think you'd have a hard time selling this in Brooklyn. Maybe not, but yeah, maybe. No, I didn't see that coming. I really thought that was gonna be gross. The next drink from 1884, the Golden Slipper, which sounds like a sex move. Um, <laughs> it's on page 34. No congregation turn to page 34 while we recite the Golden Slipper. One half wine glass of yellow chartreuse. The yolk of one egg. One half wine glass of Danziger Goldwasser. This is a favorite with American ladies. Mm. Be careful when preparing this beverage not to disturb the yolk of the egg. Here's a fun thing. I'm gonna eat some raw eggs. And you might be saying, that sounds dangerous. Um, yeah, that's not without risk. There's more to the science here, but basically speaking, the fresher the eggs are, the safer you are when you do this. How do you know how fresh your eggs are unless you watch the chicken uh, the hen lay it? Well, I'll show you. You get yourself some water, and then you take your eggs and you see if they float like witches. Fresh eggs will sink. If any of them were standing on one end, I wouldn't use those, those would be less fresh. If any of them were like floating, I would throw them away. Let's do it, baby. Crack it on a flat surface. Let's get rid of our egg white. Somebody right now is saying, oh, don't you know that you can just like run it through your fingers to do that? Disgusting. Why would I do that? That's gross. And put that right there into our glass. And there you have it. Now I want one ounce of yellow chartreuse. So it calls for Danziger Goldwasser. I think there is like one brand of it left and believe it or not, even for me, that stuff is hard to find. I looked up like what would be a suitable replacement and it said a mild herbal liqueur. An ounce of Benedictine is probably the way to go on that front. It's hard to imagine ladies of the 1840s looking at that and saying, 
I can't wait to swallow that whole thing. First, I'm gonna just start by sipping the liqueur. Let's, because I only, I'm only doing this once, so let's take it apart, right? It's thick in the mouth, syrupy. It's actually not bad. The combination is quite refreshing and indeed herbal. And you get a lot of notes, man. That travels all over the place. It's kind of nice, actually. I get black pepper, I get honey, I get sage, thyme, maybe even a hint of rosemary or something like that. Not loud, not like, oh, wow, like good roasted chicken, no. But if you really had to pull it apart, I think those are flavors that are in there. They're too sweet for my taste, but believe it or not, in the 1800s, people liked their drinks sweet. Sugar was a luxury, and if you could get your hands on it, you wanted it. Ugh, I hope this doesn't fucking fuck me up for the night. So the question really is, what does the egg do to what I had already tasted? Not much. And you don't like want to keep it in your mouth very long either. Because like, it's going to stick to your teeth and shit. It's going to be gross. So you kind of like pop it, swish it around, and swallow it. Um, it does add an eggy flavor. It does add a note of um, richness, butteriness, maybe. I don't know, you know, I'm, I haven't eaten enough raw eggs to really place the flavor of a raw egg for you. Does it taste like other raw eggs I've had? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Why not? What do I know? Um, I don't get it. It's, it's a strange thing. It strikes me as a hangover cure with the note about ladies. Like maybe they said it was like good for period pain or something. And they're like, oh, I've got to drink it. I hate it. Uh, but like, you know, somebody told them it would help and, and they thought it did, so they did it. Uh, I don't need it in my life. If you can get yourself over eating raw eggs, I guess you could try this. I just don't think you need to. It's not great. It's fucking weird. It's fucking weird. That's really what it is. All right, so the next drink is called the Knickerbane. An eighth of a wine glass of vanilla cordial syrup. The yolk of an egg, which will be carefully covered with Benedictine. Uh, third wine glass of Kummel, and two drops of Angostura or Boker's bitters. We're gonna use Boker's because I use so much Angostura. The same rule here is applied as in making Plus Cafe. Keep colors separate and the different portions from running into each other. You know, that's really a presentation thing. So something like this will be fine in this case. So I think we wanna start with our vanilla syrup. This is nothing more than simple with some vanilla extract in it. I think I'm gonna get heartburn from this episode. Ah! Oh man, did we break the yolk? No, miraculously I did not. Ah. Get it down in there without it shattering. Now I wanna carefully cover this egg in Benedictine. Now I want Aquavit. Aquavit, so this drink actually calls for Kummel, hard to come by. Near as I can tell, it's a caraway spirit. Aquavit is the best replacement I have access to. And now some Bogart's bitters, which is a uh, pretty old school style of bitters. And there you have it, a Knickerbane. Smell, that's a mess. That's a lot of everything. Herbs, spices, um, caraway, vanilla syrup. I'm not smelling that. It almost smells like Worcestershire or something. Ugh, fuck. That's not that bad, ooh. Wait a minute here, guys. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't like Aquavit at all, but here I, I actually like that. The caraway rye bread uh, kind of notes come in very late and they come in off the back of the vanilla, which comes in off the back, right? So working forward, you get something that's almost like chartreuse, which is probably the Benedictine. And then that gives Benedictine with the bitters, I think, combined itself over to this really herbal kind of flavor that quickly transitions and is overtaken to, overtaken by the vanilla. The vanilla gives way to aquavit, and there's like a real crossfade, a long lap dissolve on those two things that is actually really cool. I don't like aquavit at all, but something here is lengthened dramatically unfolds very slowly and enjoyably. I don't know how much the egg is doing that too. 
I think it's mostly the vanilla syrup. That's kind of cool. And it's funny, they compared it to a Puss Cafe. I actually think this would go well alongside of coffee. Why is there an egg yolk in it? I don't know. I mean, maybe because this was meant to be a hangover cure. That wouldn't surprise me. But most people are going to hate it. I'm a guy who drinks poison on the internet for, for likes. To me, this is a very interesting twist on something like a mashup of a Puss Cafe and a Prairie Oyster. That's basically what it's like. I, I thought that was gonna be absolutely disgusting. Fuck, that's so weird. I don't think egg yolks add a ton of flavor to any of these things. It's just part of the whole. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it's That's way more interesting than I thought it would be. I don't think you need egg yolk at all. I think that you could make that as a Puss Cafe or something similar to a Puss Cafe and have it with like a little espresso on the side and actually have that be pretty enjoyable. Okay, well, I mean, that kind of brings me up to the final drink on this episode, which is just called Peach and Honey, <laughs> which is on page 42. It says it's a tablespoon of honey and a wine glass of peach brandy, stirred well with a spoon and served. This is a favorite with many. Honey, where's my honey? Honey, honey. Didn't I bring the honey? Oh yeah, there it is. That's about a tablespoon. We need peach brandy. You can get like LaRue or something. That's like brandy that's flavored like peaches. This is a actual peach brandy made from peaches. I feel like this is more what would have been the thing. Two ounces of that. I think this is gonna be just absolutely disgustingly sweet. Do your best to kind of stir those two together. Uh, okay, here we go. This is peach and honey. Well, that's what it smells like. It's like much less disgustingly sweet than I thought it would be. I think it would be really much more enjoyable with ice. I mean, it doesn't taste all that different from like a peach tea. It does have some oakier notes. It does have some woodsiness, some nuttiness, some mellowness to it. Chilled, I think this will be kind of good. Like, um something you might want on like a summer afternoon, you know? Hold on a second now, hang on now. The book doesn't say anything about ice, but I have a hard time buying that this particular drink would have ever been served without ice. Here we go, peach and honey, chilled and a little bit diluted. Fucking good, man. That is a fun flavor combo. It really is, it, it is, is overly sweet. I want to, oh, I want to add stuff to this. I want to keep working that. It's got a little bit of a rooty kind of bite, a little bit of bitterness. Bitterness, it's adjacent to bitterness. It's very sweet. It's got a kind of an earthy vibe and certainly peach and certainly the things you associate with peaches, except for the sometimes tartness that peaches can have. And it doesn't really taste that much like honey. I want to see if we can add a little sophistication, a little bit of complexity. The first idea is bitters. Angostura bitters. And I do think that it would be good here. Almost treat this like it's an old fashioned. Do we need a, we might want a real base spirit in that. Let's throw in an ounce of Jamaica rum. Stir that. This is a rum that's a little too aggressive for that, but it's, no, that's not wrong. The funky hogo notes that are in Smith & Cross are a little too loud for what we got going on here because now we've got some aggressive rum flavors. We got some real pirate juice, some hogo. We got some funky molasses pit fermenting stuff. I think another rum would be fine, a little bit more mild. I think that Appleton Estate would be great. I think that Hamilton 86, like a Demerara rum would be really nice here. We're, we're too far gone though, we're not going back. It does add like a whole other note. It, it puts it, it's like the center of the drink was missing. The center of the drink is rum now, and it's got honey and peach on the wings. What I wish I had was some fresh mint, because fresh mint would go, oh, great in this. It's almost, you know what it's like? It's starting to remind me of like a, um, a sherry cobbler. Now I do want to add the Angostura bitters. Now that we've got some base spirit in there, I want to see what happens when we add some of this bitterness, some of this Christmas spice to it. The Ango here is a bit of a mistake. Ooh, I don't know though. Wait a minute. I don't know, I kinda, it's a little heavy. 
it's a little too sweet. It's a little cloying. It sticks to you a little bit. It has this like depth to it. It feels a bit like sipping some cognac in your drawing. A stiff up a lip. It's a little sweet though too, right? It's got these notes of peaches, but like burned peaches, right? That's what it was I was touching on. They're missing the brighter notes of peaches. There's no of that acidity, but it's got like peach peel, peach flesh, peach that's been on oak. It's got a bit of that oak, a bit of that toast, a bit of that char. The honey is really not loud as a honey, but it is sweetening the drink a lot. Maybe you would want to, yeah, I think I want to tone that way down. The rum is right there in the center, but not, it's no longer is it overpowering. I don't know if it ever really was, but it certainly isn't now. And that is infusing the drink with fire, where you know you're drinking a cocktail. It sets the throat on fire a little bit. It's got some esters. It's got some, some fumes in it, you know? It's got some of those fusel oils going on, particularly in this rum. A little bit like the smell of gasoline. A very little bit. Oh, distantly, and not in an unpleasant way. It's not even like the smell of gasoline. A little bit is an unpleasant smell, as a person who enjoys a car, too. Here's what's weird. It starts out tasting like some kind of a peach dessert. Like you've got peach ice cream covered in rum. When the Angostura Bitters comes in, and it comes in late on this, it goes from being like a peach affogato, affogato, into something that tastes like a baked apple. It, it's got those Christmas spices, allspice, um, clove. It's got the makings of a legit tiki drink. I don't have the ingredients to do it. Mint would be cool. I looked for fresh mint. I don't have any fresh mint. Uh, I couldn't even find Rumple, but I do have Smirnoff Peppermint Twist, which I consider to be a pretty good peppermint liqueur at 30% ABV. I don't have any fresh citrus either on hand, um, and I might want that if I was doing a real tiki drink here. However, sometimes from these kinds of limitations, cool ideas can emerge. Maybe even the beginnings of a tiki drink that can be explored with like other ingredients. We're gonna throw some mint in, or sorry, we're gonna throw some, some honey, about that much our peach brandy. Let's go with um, an ounce and a half, fuck it. Let's do an ounce of Jamaican rum. Yeah, uh, an ounce and a half. Cheating a little bit, I'm gonna use um, a dasher of Bitterman's Elamakule Tiki Bitters. I'm gonna use one dash of Angostura Bitters. And I'm gonna use two bar spoons of this mint liqueur because I don't have fresh mint. Let's put some ice in our shaker. Ice cube in our glass. We're gonna strain that into our glass. Right away, I love that color. That is mwah, beautiful little pink. Let's see what we got. There's an old lemon here. <laughs> and I mean old. It wants some real citrus. I don't feel like going on a hunt for a lime, so, you know, fuck it. Half a lemon is usually about an ounce. Yeah, lemon took over. I don't know, it was more interesting before. I don't know what I did wrong here. I'm not getting any heavy notes of mint. This is kind of like boring. It kind of feels like it wants more honey, actually, which, you know, sounds crazy. Let's get some honey in here. No, that does help it. Oh, wow, weird. Now I can kind of taste the mint. Mint's a mistake. Fresh mint would be a lot different, better. I shouldn't have even tried the mint. Ooh, there's a woodsy kind of note at the end there. Wait a minute, where'd my rum go? Um, it was like close to one to one. What if it was a little bit more rum? An extra half an ounce of the Jamaican rum. Okay, aha, now you've got those uh, burned peaches, the, the peach notes, and these another dash of Angostura bitters. You got these burned peach notes. Um, and some real, a little bit of hogo now from the rum. And huge activation on the mint. And and the Christmas spices, they're really playing off of each other. Rum, charred burned peaches, and the Christmas spices. I did lose the baked apple thing that was happening before. There's a weird part of me that wants to know what it would be like if this was carbonated. So uh, I'm gonna take my drink mate, and I'm gonna take this whole cocktail and put it right in here. 
I love Drink Made. I've been using these things for years. They noticed and they said, Greg, can we sponsor this the show? And I said, yes, you can sponsor this show. If you use the link in the pink comment below or up here in the corner, uh, check out Drink Mate. You're gonna get 10% off if you order through that link. And uh, it's a really cool machine. It'll carbonate anything. It has a different kind of regulator or carbonator, I don't know, than a lot of these other machines. And so you can do stuff that has pulp in it. You can do stuff that has fruit in it. You can do stuff that has spirits in it. You know, it'll just carbonate pretty much whatever. Like a whole cocktail. There is our fizzy whatever. And it is carbonated. <gasps> Beautiful. Really pretty. Wow, man. Carbonation brings out a whole lot of other flavors. This is like a three-act structure now. Let me attack that. Whoa. Sweet peach with notes of oak, char, burn. Man, it hits three different notes before. Gets a little tangy here. There it is. What is that? That is a darker flavor. That is a molasses hogo kind of flavor that comes up there. Closing out on cinnamon. Closing out on clove. There it is, allspice. <gasps> wow, man. I don't get the mint anymore. The mint's gone. But I do think fresh mint on your nose would be really nice here. Uh, halfway through, I was like, I don't think carbonating this is gonna really do anything for it. But in this case, man, it kind of did. It changes the whole texture. When you take a sip, it rapidly off gases in your mouth and fills your mouth almost like foam. That is fun. What a cool thing. I love this thing. All kinds of fun tricks you can do with this guy. I really think that there's a full blown tiki drink in that somewhere that I'm, I'm not quite there yet. I'm missing. I'm enjoying that, but it's not bad. It's, it's, it needs work. It needs work. I think lime would be better than lemon. And I think fresh mint instead of the Smirnoff. I think starting with that would be very interesting. Anyway, just a crazy idea I had to explore. Well, there it is. I've been sitting on this book for years and thinking about what can I do an episode from the book. And, and that was it. Um, just the, what I call the worst drinks of 1884. But honestly, they weren't mostly that bad. And at the very least, they had ideas. They had some ideas. I think that the eggs were all pointless, but you know, fun stuff. I wonder if there's more I can do with this. I don't know. Thank you so much for watching the show. If you like it, please check out the links in the comment below and up here in the corner and all that stuff. Like and subscribe. I have a Patreon where we are very candid in the Discord. There's a Discord that's for Patreon members. Uh, check that out. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week on another HTD. I'm pleasantly surprised. I, I may have to retitle this episode for more strengths. I, I don't know.